using the following diagram, express the vectors w1, w2, and w3 as linear combinations of the vectors u and v. Now, we have the plane R2, we have our vectors u and v coming off the origin, and we have three other vectors, w1, w2, and w3. So the point of this exercise is to visualize linear combinations. Now, we do this all the time. So if I want to plot a point in the xy plane, what do we do? So when the plot point 2 comma 3, we'll go over 2 and x, and then up 3 and y. That's using a linear combination. If we take the standard basis for the plane, so it'll be the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. Then if I go over 2 and x, that's taking the vector 2 times 1, 0. If we go up 3 and y, that's adding the vector 3 times 0, 1. So if I want to get to the point 2, comma 3 from the origin, we're just going to break things up into a linear combination. Then the geometry is we're just moving along a rectangular grid. So first, we move along our x-coordinate, then we're going to move along our y-coordinate. Now, what we're using here is the basis property. So there's nothing special about using the standard basis, you just need a basis. For our u and v, they're going to form a basis, okay, and just to put some numbers to what we're working with, let's call u equal to 1 minus 1, v equal to 1, 1. So this is how u and v live relative to each other in the xy plane. Now, if we take all multiples of u, that'll give me a u-axis. We take all multiples of v, that gives me a v-axis. So what we're going to do is trade in our xy plane for a uv plane. Now, once I do that, we could just tilt our picture, and we'll keep all of our points in relative position. So that puts us over here. Now it's real easy to pick off the coordinates for our w's. For w1, we're going to have over 1, down 1, so 1 minus 1. For w2, we're going to come back 1, down a half, so we have minus 1, minus a half. Then for w3, we're going to have 2 and a half, and then up 1 and a half. So we have 2 and a half, 1 and a half. So those are going to be our coordinates in terms of u and v. Now, that means w1 is going to be equal to u minus v. If we stick in for u and v in terms of x and y coordinates, we're going to get out 0 minus 2. So if we do the vector addition here, we we'll go over 1 in u, and then back 1 in v, and we wind up at 0 minus 2. So if you note, our w1 is directly beneath the origin as expected. For w2, same idea. The linear combination is minus u minus a half v. You work it out in terms of x and y, you get minus one and a half, one half. Then for the vectors, we're just going to go back one in u, and then back a half in v. And then that's going to agree with our minus one and a half, one half, relative to the origin. Finally, same idea for w3. As a linear combination, we get 2 and a half u plus 1 and a half v. So in terms of x and y, we get 4 comma minus 1. And then when we do our vector addition, we're going to go 2 and a half u and then 1 and a half v, which gets us to our 4 minus 1 relative to the origin. So that works out also.